Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Legacy Percussion. This is Jerry Leak, your host, talking about some African and Indian adaptations to drum set. So this is our first transition into ideas applied to the drum kit, which is my first and primary instrument when I started playing drums. Um, today, we're going to look at a very basic example that was actually demonstrated in the previous video on harmonic time. And it's using just a simple 3-3-2 three, three, rhythm structure that's adapted to the drums in a variety of instruments. It can be applied everywhere. These are universal rhythm cells that I play on piano, on frame drums quite a bit. Um, but on drum set, it's going to be very, very simple. So what is 3-3-2? Three, three, Basically, we add up the numbers and we get 8. So we're thinking in 16th notes. So 8 16th notes would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And if the bass drum's in laying down a quarter note, you can see that we're basically talking about a simple 2-4 meter. Now, if we divide that into our 3-3-2 three, three, and accent the ones, we get our primary phrase. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. Now, we can use numbers. We can use Indian syllables, which are a big part of my work, the solka too. We have takita, takita, taka, takita, takita, taka. This pattern is the most famous rhythm structure throughout the world, probably the world's most famous. And you'll hear it in every culture and every style. Um, and it was part of our Gahu Bell Pattern series, which was for one of the earlier videos, I think video number uh, 15 and 16, got into the 332 bell for our Gahu rhythm. Um, you'll hear it in second line drumming, you'll hear it in Middle Eastern drumming. Anyway, to the point, we're going to apply that pattern to the drums. So it's going to be one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Now I'm going to put the twos on the top. So we have. Very straightforward pattern using the ones of each of the cells. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Two more variations on that are going to be playing the one twos. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, or taka, taka, ta. We can take that same pattern and move it forward by a 16th note and play what I call the two threes. In other words, the ones will be empty. Two, three, two, three, two, two, three, two, three, two, two, three, two, three, two. Now, there are many other variations on this, but these are the three I want to demonstrate today. And if I add a symbol, just playing the quarter note, I can speak the phrase and then let you listen for a little bit, and you'll get an idea of how these three set the stage for what we're going to do next. So we have... Certainly you can orchestrate these patterns around the drum set in much more unique ways and then bringing in aspects of the hi-hat, but I'm really going to talk about bass drum and hands in this particular study. So that's our first model, setting up the phrase, unison on the bass drum and the cymbal. Now we go to what I call the counter stick patterns, where the cymbal is going to be playing first an offbeat eighth note. And that's the first counter stick pattern we hear naturally, and I call that the gospel clap. It's kind of giving you that backbeat. If you were thinking of this as in four, one, two, three, four. So it's giving you that reference. Now it immediately changes the syncopation. So let me give you this series with the offbeat clap and some recitation and some just listening. Here we go. Tucky. So we have Tucky, the Tucky, the Tucker, Tucky, the Tucky, the Tucker, Tucky, the Tucky, the Tucker, Tucky, the Tucky, the Pa, Patty, Pa, Pa. to let language take me what, whatever zone I want to play. I can be singing songs. I can be singing the patterns themselves. 
Uh, and I could just be internalizing the phrase and listening and enjoying the combination. So we're still in kind of simplistic zone, but you can see that even simple patterns start to grow into complex phrases. Let's go to another simple pattern so that we have a lots to explore in this first of the drum set videos. I take the offbeat eighth note and I add another hit. So it's two sixteenths on the offbeat. One and a two and a one. And to me, that very much reminds me, of course, if I swung it, it would be kind of a reggae style. We'll talk about swing in a moment. But I'm thinking of that as an African drum called the kagan. Kagan, 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 kagan. And if you look at the Gahu videos from before, I talk about that. So I'm really thinking about that as a cultural connection. Here's our pattern now with this. We have. Then. And the idea is to really stay in one pattern for as long as you can to really own the phrase, get in a bit of a trance and a kind of a meditation. We're going through a whole series of these, but it's really designed to introduce you to possibilities and, you know, planting a seed in that rhythm garden and growing these ideas very gradually and, and achieving this basic metaphor, the deeper the roots, the taller the tree. So let's go through another pattern. I take the offbeat 16th and I now land it on the beat, so it becomes... One and a two and a one and a two and a one. Very common drumming pattern in sambas and, and of course it's the bongo bell for Afro-Cuban music. Caw, kiki, caw, kiki, caw, kiki, caw. So. That was four bars each of them again. Let me get it again so I can really can really hear the bell this time. That phrase is a little more challenging for my students. Uh, I would, I'm not quite sure why, because it lands on the beat, but it does create more intricacy with the pattern, and that's the idea, is growing these phrases. If we take out the middle eighth notes to that pattern, we have a shuffle, and in this context would be like a Brazilian sort of pandero shuffle. Do we have? And the pattern becomes... So, in review, before we move to something else, is that we explored the same three drum variations with four different cymbal patterns. Unison, offbeat eighth note, offbeat sixteenths, bongo bell, and then the Brazilian shuffle. But I did totally forget something that I want to come back to, which is if you take the bongo bell pattern, which is ka ki ki ka, and if you swing it, you got the spang a lang of, of swing. And I'm going to put it on this little jazz cymbal, and we have a little of a hi-hat on the back beat, and we have... So the feel changes everything. All these patterns can be put in a variety of interpretive ways. What I want to do next before this video will end is talk about the dotted eighth note, uh, the four over three concept. So uh, this will be, time is short. Uh, let me give you what we have here. Basically a four over three, which means I need three uh, phrases, three bars to complete a cycle. So check it out.
I'm going to have to end here because of time, but just so you know, there's two other very fascinating patterns in the three feel that are possible on drum set. Actually, there are probably many, many more, but that's the basic one, the dotted eighth on top. So this is our first video on the Legacy Series on drum set. Stick around. We're, uh, we're going to look at long forms in a moment, uh, both in harmonic time and then on the kit. Talk to you later. Thanks very much. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care.